Whatever happens in your life, there's always some reason that happened. There was an Afrikaans uh, couple who moved in near us, near our family home. He was a sergeant major in the Defence Force. And he arrived without furniture and with his family. So my parents lent them some beds and mattresses and blankets and uh, because we, ne we never knew an Afrikaans person. We had never, we just stayed within the Scottish group sort of style. And this old lady, she was always wanting me to go to the, this uh, church. And whenever she saw me, she was at me, at me, at me, go to the church. And <clears throat> so this particular uh, night, uh, I didn't know it was the same church that I'd already been to. Um, she came to me and said, you are scared and fearful to go to church. Well, if you're 16, 17, you're not, you're not supposed to be scared of anybody. So I said, well, I'm not scared to go to that silly church of yours. She said, well, that, why haven't you come? I've invited you dozens of times, why don't you come? So I said, all right, I'll come. And so we met at the church and she was there and she got, got my family there as well. That made it even worse. If it, and the guy spoke, I'm not too sure what he spoke about, but when he uh, gave this altar call, which is quite something, uh, if you don't know what an altar call is, like I didn't, what they do is they say, who wants to give their heart to the Lord? And I, I thought, well, I don't remember ever doing that. I didn't give my heart to the Lord. I, that was a new expression, so I thought, I'll do that. And I put my hand up and... The guy says, see your hand? And then he was saying, yes, I'll see that hand, I'll see that hand, any more, any more. And I, the way he spoke, I thought about 20, 30 people all put their hand up. So then he said, everyone put their hand up, come forward. And I was the only one that came forward. Turns out that they had a plan, they had a, the deacons would put their hand up too, so to encourage other people. So anyway, then he, there were two chaps stood alongside of me. Um, I I think they were deacons. Now you go, then he says, will you go into the minor hall? They're going to pray for you. So I'm standing in front of a church. I mean, for a young guy, it's a bit odd. Then you're going to walk with two people you've never seen before, two people you're not too sure about. You know in that church they have a reputation of swinging from the chandeliers. They have a reputation of looking for Jesus under the chair. It's a queer place, the whole, your defense system is at an all-time high. And remember that I, um, I'd been in the army for a year, or, or not quite a year, and I um, it made the unarmed combat team. And I thought, boy, I'm going to need this the other night. And these two, and they took me to this minor room. A minor room is a, it's, it's, I now know it's a prayer room, but I didn't know that. And I walked in the room and here these two big guys followed me. And they asked me if I'd repented of my sins and all those kind of questions. But uh, they wanted to pray. And I was scared to close my eyes because I thought these guys are going to do something. So I went and stood in the corner of the room so that my back was covered. And that if they're going to come at me, they're going to come from the front. And then they asked me to pray, and I said to them, well, I don't pray. Because I figured if I say I don't pray, I don't have to close my eyes, and I don't, I'm don't. i going to see anybody who's coming at me, and I, I was already psyched up to defend myself. But they kept asking this question, you know, about sin, and but I knew my sins were gone. I didn't have any sin. That's how I felt. I felt clean. But anyway, to make them feel good, uh, they said, say after me. Uh, you know, I'll come to you. And I said whatever they said, but I kept my eyes open. I never closed my eyes. And then they said, oh, no, that was over. We're going to go back into the church. And this raises another embarrassment. Because this time, when you walked out, your back is to the church people, the congregation. But when you come out of this minor hall, you're gonna, they're all going to look at you. And I'm thinking, I said, I hope I haven't got any friends here, because this will go all around town, you know. But as I got to the doorway, the old man was waiting there, an old man was waiting there. And I, at first, I didn't know he was connected to my wife-to-be. 
And he just put his hand on my head and he started prophesying. And he said things like, you'll go to kings and princes and people you know not of, you'll cross the oceans, you'll change government policies, you'll, oh man, he, I thought, well, this guy needs to be locked up. He's dangerous. And he carried on and on. Now, you've got to imagine I'm in the doorway, a whole congregation's looking, I, I don't know any, I'm, I'm scared of this place. I just want to get beat it out of there. I want to get out of this place. And he went on. I can't remember it all. Uh, and that was my experience of my first real Pentecostal, if you like, charismatic, whatever you want to call it, thing. And in case we, you wonder, it took many years, but about 30 or 40 years subsequent to that event, that actually happened. We went overseas and uh, the very things that he said would happen have, and they've continued to happen. So uh, my experience of the gifts of the Spirit, if you like, or prophecy or word of knowledge, whatever it was, proved to be right and genuine. Uh, so it got nothing to do with me.